What's up YouTube, this is Coding for Noobs, and today we're going to start a new tutorial series. In this tutorial series, we'll be learning how to configure and set up uh, different services on a Ubuntu server. So we're going to be setting up stuff like Apache, Nginx, MySQL, and all other kind of things that can uh, help us tweak and secure our server and, you know, make it more faster and reliable. Uh, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm actually going to be using a virtual machine. Uh, you guys can install something like VirtualBox as well, it's free, and then all you have to do is download the Ubuntu Server Edition to follow along, and to get that, I'm actually going to show you how to get it right here, so we're just going to go to Ubuntu, I think it's dot com, or is it dot, yeah, we go to Ubuntu.com, and then we go to Server, and then we can go Overview, and download Ubuntu Server. And from there, you can just download the latest version, 14.04 LTS. Um, I'm using 12.04 because that's the one I've had downloaded from before. Uh, you can use 14.04 LTS. It'll pretty much be the same. I don't think there'll be that many differences. And if there is, you can just uh, ask me and I'll try to help you. You know, I'll help you as best I can. Anyways, uh, when we're creating a virtual machine, uh, I'm just going to call mine. Ubuntu server and one second please sorry about that guys anyways as I was saying I'm just gonna name mine Ubuntu server uh, type I'm gonna set up Linux and then Ubuntu 64-bit because I believe I downloaded the yep, AMD 64-bit ISO and then you hit next and then recommended RAM is 512 uh, you can adjust it if you want to give it a little bit more I think I'm gonna adjust mine uh, yeah, I'm going to use 1024, 124, so a gig of RAM. Uh, next, uh, create a new virtual hard drive. So basically we're creating a hard drive for our virtual machine to use. Uh, create a virtual disk image. Yeah, I'll just use that. Virtual box disk image. Okay. Uh, dynamically located, meaning it only uses, it will only use space on your physical hard drive as it fills up. So that way it won't take up like a bunch of space to begin with. Uh, it's recommended that we use 8. I'm just going to leave it at 8. I don't think we'll be using more than that. Uh, create. And here we are. Our Ubuntu server is ready. And we just hit start. And then it's going to ask us to supply the um, the installation file. Sorry. So the ISO file. So for me, I'm going to go to desktop, operating systems, Ubuntu 12.04.3 server, AMD64 ISO. I'm going to double click on it and hit start and basically it's just going to boot up Ubuntu server now and from here I need to configure it so pretty much you just set the language that you want uh, I'm going to be doing mine in English and then we can do multiple server install with mass check for disk defects test memory boot from hard disk rescue broken system or install Ubuntu server the only thing we need to worry about right now is install Ubuntu server so you just hit enter again and it's going to start the installation once we get there, we'll have to select the language to use for our installation process. Uh, process sorry, I'm just going to select English once again. And then it's going to ask us for our location. I'm in Canada, so I'm going to set that to mine. You can set whatever country you're from. Uh, detect keyboard layout. Uh, if you do not want to do this, do this, you can select your keyboard from a list. I'm just going to say yes, have it automatically detect. Uh, press one of the following keys. Uh, press the following key Q. Z. Is there a labeled key? No, there's not. 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 No, 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 no. Keyboard layout appears to be US, which is correct. I have a US based keyboard. Continue. And then we're going to be brought to a new screen. I'm just going to pause the video while this continues to install. That way I don't waste time. Alright, so that first bar finished loading across, and we're brought to another one. It's attempting to configure IPv6, uh, the IP address of the server, you know, att attain IP address, configuring network with uh, dynamic host protocol, the automatic IP address configuration. I'm just going to pause the video once again while we wait for the next dialog to come up. Oh, never mind. Here we are. Host name is a single word identifies your system to the network if you don't know what the host name should be consult your network administrator so for our 
for our purpose, I'm just gonna name ours YouTube. You can actually name it pretty much whatever you want. Name it YouTube and then hit tab and then enter to continue. And then full name for your user. So I'm gonna make my name C4N, you know, for coding for noobs. You can make yours whatever you want. Basically it's just a username for your account. And then we hit continue. And then username for your account, C4N and then your password. So my password is going to be YouTube. You can set your password to whatever you want it to be. Uh, typically you want this to be more secure. Uh, as you can see mine is a weak password which is considered to be too weak you should select a stronger password. Basically this is because um, people will be able to access your server via SSH assuming your ports are forward and whatnot and it would be very easy to crack into your server and modify stuff with a weak password. Um, so it's recommended if you're using this server for real then you should uh, use a sophisticated password consisting of stuff like symbols, capitals, lowercases, and numbers. Next we have to set up users and passwords. You may configure your home directory for encryption such that any files stored there will remain private even if your computer is stolen. The system is seamless and will mount your encrypted home dri directory each time you log in and automatically unmount when you log out of all sessions. Encrypt your home directory? Uh, sure, we'll do that. It basically just means that we're going to encrypt a bunch of stuff on our system so that if someone tries to hack into it or like gets a hold of your desktop, they can't recover your web server stuff. Uh, is this correct? American Rainy River? No, it's not. So I'm actually in, uh, I have to look for Toronto, which is in Canada. Here we go. Toronto. Uh, next. Just can configure some more stuff. Uh, guided disk and set up LVM. Uh, sure, we'll use this. Uh, yep. Write changes to configure LVM. Yes. Oops, oh, sorry. Yes. Uh, hit max. To be used below. We just hit continue here. And it's pretty much just setting up our hard drive. Write the changes to disk. Yes. Um, this is going a little bit slow, so I'm just going to pause it while it finishes. Just a brief update, this is pretty much the longest part of the installation for your Ubuntu server. Um, basically it's installing the base system, so it's basically installing Ubuntu on the virtual machine and unpacking all the packages and stuff that were located inside the ISO file. Uh, this will take a little bit of time. Uh, during this time, you can actually probably go make a sandwich or something, you know, get yourself a drink, maybe even watch a quick TV show, depending on how fast your computer is. Uh, I'm just going to go back to pausing the video again just to conserve some YouTube time because we're already at 8 minutes. Uh, I'll unpause the video when this is 100%, that way you guys can see what to do next. Alright, so that dialog just finished, and now we are setting up our HTTP proxy to access the outside world. Uh, we're not actually using a proxy. If you are using a proxy on your computer, you're going to actually have to set it here. Um, but I'm not using it, so I'm just going to leave it blank and hit continue. And now we're going to have another little progress bar, scanning file 954, so it's just checking up your packages and stuff. Uh, I guess I'll unpause when this finishes. Alright, now we are at the part where it says select and install software. We're actually going to have to do a few things here, so once the new dialog pops up after this uh, progress bar is finished, I'll unpause the recording again and we'll choose our server or our software to install on the server by default. Uh, just quickly before we get there, um, I'm going to do install security updates automatically, just so you know your server installs anything that's like required to like you know protect yourself oh perfect all right so now that we're here we're gonna have to set up a few things so we have open ssh server dns server lamp server mail server print server samba server post sql servers virtual machine host blah 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 blah. what we need for sure is an open ssh server sorry spacebar use spacebar to highlight these so we need open ssh server so this way we can connect to it remotely if we want to later. I'm not going to install LAMP. Uh, we're going to do this um, differently later, I believe. Yeah, no, we're not going to do LAMP. Uh, we're going to also install Virtual Machine Host. And then after that, uh, we're going to do Continue. And uh, basically, this is just going to install 
the like basic basic packages that we're going to use and one is SSH and the other one's just for your virtual machine. And once this progress bar finishes, I'll unpause the video once more and we'll pretty much be done. Alright, so we're coming up to the end of our installation for select and install software and it's pretty much just cleaning up everything that we just did, you know, removing any of those temporary files that may have left behind. And I believe we're near the end of installation. That might have actually been it. Uh, just waiting for it to load the next screen. There we go. Installing Grub2. Alright, so that's just installing the bootloader. This will actually take a few minutes as well. I completely forgot about Grub. Sorry, guys. Um, so I'll just unpause as soon as Grub finishes. Oh, wait, no. Install Grub boot to master boot. Yep. So basically, what Grub is, is it basically when your virtual machine boots up, it's going to load boot or Grub, sorry. And Grub's going to tell it, okay, launch uh, your Ubuntu server on the virtual machine. Uh, if you're running like Ubuntu already on your computer or you're like dual booting with something else, then you probably know what Grub is, but that's just for you, those of you who don't know what it is. It's basically what says, okay, start Windows or start Ubuntu. Um, Alright, so finishing installation. So after this dialog finishes, I believe we're done. Sorry, like again, I said, again, I said, sorry, because uh, I forgot about the Grub installer. Uh, but yeah, after this we'll be done and pretty much our server is just going to reboot and we'll log in for the first time and that'll be it for this tutorial. Installation complete. It is time to boot your new system. Make sure you remove the installation CD. So if you did use a CD or USB or something, you should remove it now. And then we hit continue. And uh, here we go. And our virtual machine is now rebooting. And uh, this is Grub. So we get to choose, or as you can see, it automatically chose Ubuntu for us. And it's starting up our Ubuntu server. And here we are, U YouTube login. So pretty much right here, this is just like a nice little console window for, my, for us. So that's pretty much what the Ubuntu server is. We're actually not going to install a UI or like some kind of desktop manager on it. We're actually going to do everything from command line. So for all of you who are scared of command line, now, now it's time to face your fear because we're about to get used to it. And if I remember correctly, we set the password to YouTube. Oh, wait. Username C4N. And then our password was YouTube for my tutorial. And as you can see, I am now logged into the server it tells you stuff like the server load memory usage swap uses processes your ip address um yeah it tells us 117 packages can be updated and 63 updates or 63 updates are security updates so that concludes this tutorial and our next tutorial i'll actually go over how to install these updates and how to you keep your system up to date and then after that, we'll start installing software like Apache and Nginx, and I'll even show you how to do some like remote access with SSH and whatnot. So thanks guys for watching. If you guys have any specific software you want to learn how to install or configure, let me know, and I'll do some research if I don't already know how to install it, and we'll install it for you. Thanks.